a legendary self-made billionaire, once was homeless with a rough childhood, including witnessing the separation of his parents as a child, to growing up in foster care till the age of nine. As a child, he began selling newspapers and Christmas cards to feed himself and his family, and as of today, he is an entrepreneur and a proud billionaire with a net worth of $2.8 billion. This self-made legendary figure is the co-founder of Paul Mitchell Hair Care Products and the Patron Spirits Company. Often described to be as living the American dream, he is none other than John Paul de Joria. It was 1944, John was born in Los Angeles, California. Following the divorce of his parents, his now single mother was unable to make ends meet. John was sent to foster care. Upon turning nine years old, he came back to live with his mother. John was educated at Atwater Elementary, followed by John Marshall High School. In his years as a teenager, he found himself amidst street gang activities. To his luck, he was advised and guided by his high school tutor, eventually resulting in him letting go of his involvement. After serving his time in the US Navy for two years, he came back with no money to fund college. He opted for employment as a door-to-door -door salesman of insurance, encyclopedias, shampoo and also as a janitor. By this time, he was living in his 20-year-old Rolls Royce. As he was getting started, back in 1966, his first wife left him with their child. She ended up leaving with all the money they had acquired. And as if to place a cherry on top of the already problematic situation, she took the only car they owned. He soon found himself unable to make up for rent and thus was thrown into the streets with his child. Fired once. In 1980, he was fired over a disagreement from his job at Redken Laboratories, a hair care brand. However, this was where he found his career advancement opportunity. He began work at Redken as a sales representative. A year and a few months later, he was promoted to undertake responsibilities in two divisions. Fired twice. Found a job at Firmodil Hair Care as a trainer to educate management and the sales team on selling products. He ensured a significant increase in sales for the company as far as 50% yet again fired as the company stated that he didn't fit in. Fired the third time. He joined the Institute of Trichology, another hair care brand. He began his usual job of selling, earning a $3,000 salary, on top of which he received a 6% commission on any new sale. Again, fired. This time, the company stated they were unable to pay his salary. In 1980, desperate to make something out of nothing, he borrowed a loan of $700 and partnered up with Paul Mitchell, a hairdresser. Together, launched John Paul Mitchell Systems. Their business began with the development of a shampoo and a leave-in conditioner. The beginning was rough, especially the first two years into the business. However, finally, in the third year, the dullness began to wear off with the first ever extraordinary $1 million revenue made. Nine years later, John co-founded the Patron's Spirit Company with Martin Crowley, a brand of tequila. He owned 70% of the company. However, this product was priced at a high rate, $37 for a startup in its initial stages, which was a high price. But as the product was of extremely high quality, it made sense. But the market did not know the brand, therefore another struggling beginning. However, word began traveling around, fast, and they began showing profits in months. In 2018, the company was acquired by Bacardi Limited for $5.1 billion. John was to remain as the chairman emeritus. He also founded the House of Blues nightclub chain and maintains interests in a variety of industry reaching far from ultimate vodka to solar utility to John Paul Pett to marquee yachts to Diamond Audio to a Harley Davidson dealership and even a diamond company, the Joria, and many other ventures. How did a homeless desperate individual end up becoming a self-made billionaire? He did not attend university, he has no degree, but a billionaire Stick with us as we explore what drove him to build two billion dollar businesses. John recommends that if one is to make a solid financial base for success, the 
first thing I want to do and I would suggest to everybody is pay off your house because if everything goes wrong, you have a place to live. John began as a homeless, desperate individual. We can trust him on this. There's no safer place than your home. After securing a home, John recommends saving some money to be able to cover at least six months worth of expenses. If things take an unexpected turn, you would have some extra cash in your back pocket. John recommends the third step is to invest the rest of the money in your business venture, as this is ultimately what will make you grow. If however, you find yourself with leftover money, you should consider investing it elsewhere. To John, being simple is key. Surprisingly, he goes about his day-to-day -day activities with minimal, and we mean minimal, use of technology. Content with his simple mobile phone. John is all pro for efficient time management and thus detests wasting time on simple activities such as what to wear. He is the black kind of guy, black pants, black shirt, and a black blazer. A practice we have all noted with the tech global Facebook and Apple star. Unlike you and me, they are happy repeating outfits. John often goes to his family for advice, especially his kids. Like us, he does often find himself in a jumble of mess. He is a billionaire, but a human after all. When I make a major business decision and I want input, I rely on the people closest to me. He strives to maintain positivity in his personal life. Being an entrepreneur of two billion dollar businesses would be tiresome, yes. But from John, it's mostly positive vibes all the way. In 2008, in an attempt to feed more than 17,000 orphans, John joined Nelson Mandela in Food for Africa. In the same year, John attempted to provide 400,000 meals for children. He is also well known as the co-creator of Grow Appalachia, which is created with the ultimate goal of promoting a healthy food lifestyle and teaching farming skills. John is well adored among his consumers for standing by his ethical principles of providing aid to the homeless, saving wildlife, protecting the environment, and mainly for voting against animal testing. John adores animals. His love for them directed him to make a promise to society that he would never undertake or involve animal testing in his business, becoming the first ever professional company to say no to animal testing. John is also the owner of the island Barbuda and is keen on opening up 70 full-time vacancies to the locals of the island. The more I make, the more I get to give back. Back in the day when his life seemed to have no direction, you may even wonder how he managed to keep any life of positivity. John Paul de Joria faced many failures, homelessness and poverty to a man with two multi-billion dollar companies. John's story is truly inspirational. As his motto states, in the end, everything will be okay. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Do give us your thoughts in the comments on John DeJoria and how he inspired you today. Thank you and see you soon.